Hello and welcome to web learning where knowledge is shared. Today I'll do a quick tutorial on how to do ADC with Interop. So let's get started with it. So first of all, what you should know in ADC, in the STM32, there are different ways to read the ADC. The first one is just start, do a reading and then stop. This is a single conversion. This can be done either by software or by interrupt. The second option is single continuous and this is automatic. Then we have multi-channel, start, all the channels and stop. And then scan continuous, again it starts, it reads all the channels and it starts again. And discontinuous mode, it starts, reads the channels, stops, then starts, and through all the channels until it stops and then it starts again. Today I'll cover only the start and stop in the single mode. This can be done in software or interrupt as I said, and we'll do it only with interrupt. The way that the ADC with interrupt works is after you initialize the ADC, then you call the HAL ADC start interrupt. You either get a HAL OK, HAL error, or a HAL busy. Everything is working fine and the code is written correctly, you'll get the HAL OK. When you get the interrupt, this will go into your IRQ handler that will transfer to the HAL ADC IRQ handler. And this will get either to process the callback in the HAL ADC conversion callback or you get a process error callback. In this tutorial, the functions that I will use are HAL ADC start interrupt, HAL ADC get value to get the value from the ADC, and the callback. In today's video, I also use the doc function in order to generate a sawtooth wave so I can read it in the ADC value. All the source code that you need to use will be marked in black all the source code that you don't have to use, like the duck, will be in red. So for the private variables, I need to have a value for the ADC to retrieve from the ADC when I'm reading it. For the duck, again, I need a variable in order to put in the duck in order to get the sawtooth wave. Then under user code begin to, I have the duck start with the channel and the set value for the first time. In the begin to, I want to start the ADC interrupt for the first time. In the while loop, I'll put a HAL delay of 1 millisecond and I'll start the interrupt again. This is needed because every time I'll get to the callback, the interrupt will finish and I need to restart it again to read the next value. The HAL delay 1 is not needed when you have your own program that you want to read the ADC in a certain time. But for our example, I want to read it every 1 millisecond or 10 milliseconds or 100 milliseconds. In the user code begin for, here I'll put the callback, again the value ADC, here is where I'm reading the ADC when the interrupt is done. I'm also setting the next value of the duck. Here I can also start the ADC again if I want to, but I'm doing it in my main. In this example, I'll use ADC 0 and the duck. The ADC will be in PA0 and the duck will be in PA4 and I'm connecting a small wire using the Nucleo L053. Today I'll be using the Cube IDE, the new Cube from SD Microelectronics. This is the latest version. Today I'm using the version 1.0.2. To start a new project, I'll click here, create a new STM32 project. This will open the Cube MX directly from the Cube IDE. I'll click Box Selector. S053 as the board I'm always using, this one. I'll click next. It requires me a project name and I'm leaving everything the same. Click next. Here again I can choose different settings and I'm only copying the necessary files and I click finish. I want to set all the peripherals to the default mode because I'm using this board with the pins and LEDs and everything. I'll click yes. And this kind of project associated with the Cubemix, do you want to open this perspective now, I'll click remember my decision and here's my project. Let's open the analog ADC in zero. I'll choose in the clock P scaler asynchronous clock divided by six or by eight. I'm leaving everything as default. Sampling time, I'll click 39.5. Here at the bottom, you'll see an explanation for each line. It's a really brief explanation, more you can read on the reference manual. For example, for the low power auto weight, you have more information. 
this window if you don't see it you just need to click the eye here for information another thing we need to do is on the NVIC enable the interrupt because we're going to use it on the dock I'll turn on the out one configuration and I'll leave everything as default two things you need to make sure you have the debug settings on under system core sys debug serial wire is enabled and you have the oscillator off under RCC high speed clock off and low speed clock off next click on clock configuration you can set this to anything you want this is your core clock and here is your ADC clock in the usual Cube Mix, you need to click generate but in the Cube IDE the only thing you need to do is save and it will generate your code so file save or control s it will ask you do you want to generate the code remember my decision and click yes after it's generated you can go to your main and you can see your code that's been already generated I already copied the code so let's go through the code again under user begin private variables PV I have value ADC and value DAC under user code begin to I have HAL ADC start this is the DAC port and this is the channel I'm using the DAC channel 1 then I have HAL DAC sit value again HDAC with DAC channel 1 the DAC align and the value that I'm using and for the first time I'm doing HAL ADC start interrupt again I don't have to do this I can also do it right here if I don't have the HAL ADC interrupt here it will go through the while and it will start the interrupt I also use some other code for HAL GPIO toggle pin you can see the video that's right here on the corner on how to toggle a GPIO this I'm always using when I'm doing some code just to see that the code is running and not getting stuck and I have the HAL ADC interrupt again again you can either have it here or have it in the user begin while going all the way down to the user code begin for I have the callback here I'm reading the ADC value and I'm putting it into the value ADC here again I'm putting the new duck value because I want to make a sawtooth I'm increasing the duck and when the duck is full when it reaches 4095 I'm setting the value of the duck back to zero to debug this code first I need to compile it and I click on the small hammer then I'm clicking on the small beetle I'm getting a confirmation perspective switch remember my settings under expressions I already have my value ADC and my value DAC because I want to see them increase I can put a breakpoint right here so I can see my code running and how my ADC value is increasing I can click resume to run the code this is the first time I'm running so my DAC value is 1 so as I'm using a wire and it's quite big I have some residual voltage on the wire I also didn't calibrate my IDC let's try to change the DAC value to 500 as you can see I can change it directly from the expression I can put almost any value but this is for the DAC the ADC will read this information and will, and will change it but for the DAC instead of doing the DAC plus 1 I can directly write whatever I want click resume again and you can see it's changing to 568 I can put uh, 1000 and again I'm seeing this change of 1058 so the value is always the same to terminate the debugger I need to click on terminate in the cube ID that's using Eclipse it's really important to terminate the debugger you can switch between the windows either clicking on the tabs or clicking right here you have to remember that you are still in debug so if we click back on this icon on the right corner we're still in debug so we have to terminate if by mistake you click again debug 
you'll see that you have you have two debug sessions and this is not good what you need to do is right click terminate and remove and then terminate this will get you back to the main window if you want to do any changes to the cube mix you just need to go back to this tab or to this small link change whatever you want in the settings and click save this will generate your code again and you can keep on working one last thing in my settings under debug configuration so in the debug configuration I click on the small arrow debug configuration debugger in the debug program there are two options is that the one is the ST-Link GDB server and one is the open OCD in my situation when I'm using the GDB server it is more fluent but sometimes I get errors with my antivirus using the open OCD it runs with a bit more errors but at the end of the day I don't have any issues with the connection to the ST-Link that's it I hope you enjoyed it thank you for listening don't forget to click on the subscribe button this always helps to my channel to grow thank you